Okay, let's see if all our hard work uh, adds up. Uh, let me explain the, the setup I have here. You, you probably wouldn't be using one of these or you wouldn't be watching this video. Uh, this is my compacted all together uh, setup bench. Uh, what I have here, a little out of camera, is a regulator that allows me to regulate the incoming air pressure between 0 and 3500 PSI going to the first stage. Uh, which goes in here to the IP gauge. Now, the important thing to know here, and this is something that's crucial when you set yours up, is when you have a first stage, you have to have a pressure relief device for it, whether it be a good working second stage in line, your IP gauge may have a pressure relief like this one does, mine has one on the back, so, uh, and or, you can use one of these simple little screw-in uh, pressure relief devices. This is in the event that the high pressure seat doesn't seat at all and you've got runaway pressure and you're taking 3,000 psi of air or whatever and slamming it right into a gauge that's only supposed to have a maximum of 300. Uh, with your second stage, you know, it's going to release around 160. Uh, these are about 175. You're going to save your gauge and most importantly, you're going to save yourself because Depending on where this breaks out, it's going to whip you and hit you, uh, and it's just not going to be a pretty situation. So be sure before you ever turn on the air to a rebuilt first stage or any first stage that there's a pressure relief device in line hooked in. So what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to check it out and see how close we are to an ideal IP. Scooper Pro likes, uh, says the IP on these should be between 125 and 145. Yeah, my experience is, um, as that high pressure seat uh, gets grooved from the you know the, the the piston into it, your IP is going to increase a little bit over time. So if you're close, uh, you know you may want to just say, hey, that's good enough. There's some perfectionists out there that have to have it just so so, but you know if I'm at a good solid 125, I know that after three four hundred cycles. I'm going to be, you know, getting closer to 130, which in my opinion is ideal. Gives you plenty of room to go up. It's all the airflow you'd ever need and in a great situation. But let's, uh, this one's all ready to go. Got my IP gauge hooked up. Got my pressure relief device here. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the branch line air and we'll see what kind of pressure we got. All right, you can see my branch line. The air pressure going to the first stage is, is at about 300 PSI. Let me zoom in on the gauge a little bit if I can. Yeah, you see we're a little low, but I haven't cycled it yet. So th this button right here allows me to purge it. Do a few purges and let's see where it locks up at. Uh, see, it's maybe, yeah, maybe at 100 and... 18, 120. Let's go ahead and bring it on up to 3,000 and see where it's going to want to stabilize at. All right, we're at 3,000. Let's purge it a little bit. Okay, so at 3,000, you know, it's about, uh, yeah, it's close to 125 there. I'm going to go ahead and turn the branch line air off and we just leave it set for a little while and let's see where it locks up at. Let's see we've got some we've got a little bit of creep here not unusual you know you normally need to cycle these some literature says 50 times Pete Wolfinger in Regulator Savvy recommends two to three hundred times before he's absolutely assured that a regulator takes a set but uh, you know this one's locking up now just at a little below 125 a little over 125 but I bet if I turn the air back on and move it back down to 300, you're going to see a change. Yeah, so overall, you know, this one's pretty low. So what I'm going to do is, or what you need to do in this situation, um, you need to go ahead and 
add at least another shim, which should bring it up to you know where uh, uh, when it's even at its lower pressure, it's at a, at least 125. You don't ever really want to go past there. If you got 300 psi on it and it's not 125, you need to get it up there a little. So uh, I'm going to pause here and uh, put another shim in it. Now, when we put another shim in it, let me back up a little bit here. And this is one of the challenges with working with a Mark V is you have to remove the cap and you have to remove the piston. So when you replace it with a thicker shim or an additional thim, shim, you have to use the bullet tool, push it back in, and putting the cap on. Each time that that piston is pulled past that dynamic o-ring that seals the shaft, you must use the piston tool to put it back through, put your cap back on, or you're going to have problems. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause here, I'm going to put another shim in it, we're going to take another look at it and see if it's brought it up to a good IP. Okay, I went ahead and disassembled the regulator, added another shim. You should never have more than a total of three shims, no matter what thickness combination you're using in the regulator at any given time. So, I've got the shim in there, I've got it back on the setup bench, I got it under pressure. And we can see at 300 PSI, I'm right at 125, which in my opinion is great because, as I said, as it breaks in, that IP is going to go up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and increase the air pressure to 3,000. Purge it a couple of times, see what changes. Okay, now I've got maybe 128. Let me turn the air off just while I'm talking. I got it at about 128. In my opinion, 128, 130 at 3,000 PSI, I mean, that's right in the money. I mean, that's regular setup, good shape, good IP, ready to dive. So uh, the last thing I would do is I would cycle this first stage. Um, I have a mechanical way set up to do that, but um, I would recommend you know, purging this thing uh, as Pete Wolfinger outlines at least a couple of hundred times. Do it slowly, tap dancing on the purge buttons, not doing anything, slow cycles, turn your air off, check for leaks, be sure your IP is stable, and you know, you've got a regulator that's good to go for years. With basic maintenance, you shouldn't have to mess with it again. It, hundreds of dives regulators ready for. Um, hope, that, uh, hope that gives you a good outline or a good basis for getting your Mark V set up. Um, the parts, most every part you'd need for a Mark V, Mark 10 is in the Vintage Double Hose website store. Get in touch with Herman, his email will be up on the screen. Uh, he can get you the right tools and uh, get you started. I hope you enjoyed the video and I uh, hope I didn't ramble on terribly much. And I appreciate you taking time to watch it. Thank you.